Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at Grace in Lakeland, Florida. I'm Mary Van Hoat, and visiting today, filling in for Pastor Pam, who's been on a retreat and respite for the last three weeks. So I bring you greetings first from your brothers and sisters in Christ at St. Mark in Dunedin, Florida, where I'm a member. And I invite anyone who's visiting today, either here in this space or watching us live stream, please come back next week and worship with Pastor Pam at the helm so you get a true flavor for this congregation. Which, by the way, I would like to thank you so much, all of the people who made this transition possible and made it very comfortable for me. Thank you for your hospitality. And um, it'll be good to have Pastor Pam back. Sometimes you don't know what you got till it's gone. I always tell my kids, so I look forward to seeing her uh, in the live stream also. A couple of things to highlight in the printed announcements. First and foremost, the poinsettia order forms are in back in the narthex. And they are due back here before December 5th. And then speaking of December 5th, the Healthy Congregations event will be held the day before on Saturday, November 4th from 9 to 1. And again, I truly want to encourage you to attend if you can to be in person with the uh, leadership of Reverend Dr. Rick Armstrong, helping the congregation set sights on the future and what will be the calling for this church in terms of serving people. So come, no matter where you, what your status is, a new member, longtime member. Also, I was reminded to uh, tell you about the live stream Thanksgiving service that will be Thursday this Thursday, the 24th, at 7 p.m. And as far as the activities and the things that you are doing to serve people in need, a reminder, they still need peanut butter and ramen noodles for the pack a sack or the backpacks that you supply for children at the schools. And uh, the personal hygiene kits are still being collected in the bins out in the narthex. So just a few reminders of those things if it has slipped your mind that the deadlines are coming up. And then I would like to remind you, uh, Synod-wise, the Florida Bahamas Synod, of something new and exciting, and it's possible that this will directly impact you or someone you know, but there is a new church. It's called Palms, as in the palms of your hand or the palms that blow, Deaf, which is the sign for deaf, church. It is led by a pastor who completed seminary school in Chicago and her mission down here in Florida as an intern was to make a church available to the deaf and hard of hearing because about 95 percent of the deaf population does not attend church. And sadly many deaf live in a household where they're speaking and so they're brought to church and they feel isolated. And therefore, this new congregation, which is supported uh, building-wise by a church on the East Coast, it's supported by our synod, is going to be traveling and going to different places to make it accessible for people. And if we were to attend, it would be interpreted. So that's a little bit of the reversal. If you know anyone who is deaf or hard of hearing, again, go out to check, check out the Florida Bahamas Synod website, and you can see more information or maybe watch for that coming to you and announcements and so on in the future. Because our pastor at St. Mark is out of town this week visiting her family, and I could not fill in this pastor from the Palms Deaf Church is doing the sermon at St. Mark right now. So lift them up in prayer and look them up. Spread the word if you can. If there aren't any other announcements, we will then focus our mind and our hearts in preparation for worship with the prelude.
Please stand as you're able and face the font for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God in one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve with you in the of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. May Almighty God strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the power of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the word. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Daniel, chapter 7. As I watched, thrones were set in place, 
and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing, his clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night of visions, I saw one like a human being coming with clouds of heaven. And he came into the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Be we'll read responsively the 93rd Psalm. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods had lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their roaring. Your decree are very sure. Holiness benefits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Please rise as we welcome the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 18th chapter. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom is not from this world. My followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? And Jesus answered, so you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. First and foremost, a correction in the announcements. I said Thursday night live streaming. It's Wednesday. Thanks be to God, we're forgiven. Dear friends in Christ, here in this space, and those of you joining us by live stream, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You know that refrain, come and worship, come and worship Christ the newborn King. It's the refrain from a hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory. The words to this hymn and carol were written in 1816 by James Montgomery, 
a Scottish poet who wrote many, many hymns in a lot of different church hymnals. It was put to music in 1867. What I like about it, there's a call to action in the refrain. Amidst all the stories, the heralding of the angels, there's this call to action. It's difficult for me to grasp a concept of worshiping a king. It's difficult for me to even envision a king or royal subjects, except for what I see in the news. Faraway faces, faraway places. By accident of birth, I have no experience with kings or living under the rule of a kingdom. And from that inexperience, I'm uncomfortable with the concept of worshiping a king because it brings for me thoughts of submission or false adoration. I mentioned that this hymn was set to music in 1867. Something else that happened a few years earlier was the birth of Anders Anderson, my husband's great-grandfather. Born in the province of Smaland, Sweden, he emigrated to America with his wife and two sons in the late 1880s. They settled, among other Swedish immigrants, in a section of northern Wisconsin that resembled the place they left. And that's where they could use their trades as loggers and sawyers and farmers, these long handed down generations of trades. And on the walls of the family homestead, established in 1895 in Homestead, capital H, Wisconsin, there are all kinds of framed documents and a few rare photos that tell of this journey. One of my favorites is the citizenship paper for Anders, now called August Anderson, because it has this artistic handwriting. You may have some of these, these big embellishments and flourishes in the signatures and in the places they filled in the form. It was a form, and it had this great type font from that turn of the century. All on that sheet of paper was a declaration to desire to become a U.S. citizen, and it included that he would swear off his allegiance to King Oscar of Sweden. Historical records from that area of Wisconsin show that most Swedish immigrants left their homeland to escape the instability of the kingdom in Sweden, particularly in the way it affected their freedom to worship and practice as Lutherans. Treasures within my husband's family homestead include Bibles written in Swedish, prayer books in Swedish, handwritten recipes, some for very yummy things like rye bread, some not so yummy like lutefisk. <laughs> it's true, I cannot relate to living under a ruler. But that reminds me of how the impact of a king and living as subjects in a kingdom shaped my life just four generations ago. If not for the courage and faith of Anders Anderson setting out for North America, as it was written in several of the, the books, without the fortitude of his daughter-in-law, who lost three children in the early 1900s, two to the Spanish flu. But she went on to give birth to another child, my mother-in-law. If not for those people, my life as it is now would not exist. I would not be with my husband. Kingdoms, kings, rulers, subjects, dominion, and power over people and land. This was the way of organizing the world when Jesus was born. Social class and religious practices and the practice of wielding power over others were all integrated. 
flagrant displays of wealth and brazen de demonstrations with threats of war or death were the norm for rulers of that time. One need only to consider how Joseph complied with a decree announced by the Roman emperor that he must return to Bethlehem, his hometown, for a census, even though his wife was nine months pregnant and they had settled in her town of Nazareth, it's time, and for no reason, we're going to take the toll. We're going to count. Consider how the news of a newborn king right under the nose of King Herod in the hills of Judea was a threat to him. The people of Bethlehem were under the rule of the Roman Empire and had no voice. They lived with a constant reminder of the power and wealth of King Herod. Maybe you have been to the Holy Land. I have not. But I've seen pictures of the Herodium. It's Herod's palace, the remains of it, full of luxuries, amenities, auditoriums, suites, everything unattainable by the peasants. But they built that mountain that loomed over Bethlehem. And it was intentionally built to be 50 feet higher than the Great Pyramid in Egypt, a garish expression of power and wealth by a ruler. In the Gospel text today, we see another illustration of the way kingdoms and kings were embedded in the culture of that time. Pilate, a Roman governor of Judea, returns to his headquarters after trying in vain to reason with the crowd, the people who brought Jesus to him to be crucified. Where the text begins today, Pilate continues to try to sort out the details. He's a wise man. And he does it by asking questions of Jesus. Not surprisingly, Jesus answers a question with a question. And the bewildering conversation between the two of them continues beyond what we read today for several more verses. But basically, Pilate is coming from a logical point of reference about rules and boundaries of that time. He asks, are you a king? Well, if so, where is your kingdom? Where are your subjects? Why isn't anyone fighting for you? Pilate's logical point of view is contrasted so drastically with Jesus' new world's point of view that's ruled by truth. A kingdom with no boundaries where all are welcome and all are equal was very odd. But he stressed, Jesus stressed, we are equal, even you, Pilate. In this conversation with Pilate, perhaps the last person Jesus speaks to, Jesus rebukes Pilate, saying, you would have no power over me if not from above. Even in his most vulnerable time, Jesus invites Pilate to examine himself, to discover who or what is it you serve. And subtly, he invites him to serve in God's kingdom. From the story of his birth to these stories of Jesus' imminent death, we learn that his kingdom is not of this world. It is summed up in the newborn cared for by peasants who trusted God's plan. It's summed up in the way Jesus journeyed without a home, hanging out with the least desirable people, blatantly serving them to show that he came not to be served, but to serve. And he delivered the truth right unto death. His kingdom was not about fighting for control or waging war or submission to a ruler, as was the custom. His was one of peace, and of submission to God by serving one another, our brothers and sisters in Christ. I may never understand the difficulty 
difficulties, the challenges of those family members who swore off their allegiance to a king for the freedoms of America. But I think I understand why it is so difficult to serve God in his kingdom here and now, right now. Unlike an earthly king where I would know who's in charge, who has control, who sets the rules, albeit unstable and changing, and I could blame the system or the person if things weren't going right. Unlike that, the kingdom of God puts all accountability on me. That's heavy, so I understand the difficulty. I know the expectations of me. I have the word of God as the playbook. I know how to serve and who to serve, all people no matter their circumstance, status in the world, or relationship to me. I know that to God be the glory, and I am commanded to worship him by seeing Jesus' image in everyone I see. Whether it is the person seated with me at the dinner table in my home, or the person crossing the street in front of me in the comfort of my luxury car, who seems to be carrying all earthly possessions over their hunched and weathered body. Or that person appears in a newscast in a far off location where some power out of their control has stripped them entirely of their dignity and possessions. I know that I am called to worship through service to others and see that face of Jesus. But all too often, I choose to worship something else. It's easier. I submit to my checkbook balance, my comfort, my convenience, my full pantry. And I struggle with submission to Christ for self-centered reasons and erroneous thinking that submission means I will be diminished. When in fact, in reality, submission to Christ frees all of us to every possibility deep within us to serve others. And that is redeeming, that is rejuvenating, that is fulfilling. Manifestation of worshiping Christ the King is evident here in this congregation as the people of Grace in Lakeland, Florida serve one another, sharing time, talent, resources with everyone. The many components of this worship service. When you're here beside the scenes and see people getting ready, that's service. The time and talent of the technology to deliver this far and wide, that is serving in the kingdom. The personal hygiene kits that you're gathering and preparing for Lutheran World Relief, who knows where they will go? The backpacks you fill with nutritious food, who knows how that will sustain a family over the weekend? That is the kingdom of God. The toys collected for the Lakeland Police Program, that is the kingdom of God. That is worshiping. As we conclude this church year, on Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the church year, and we begin anew with a season where we watch, wait, and prepare for the coming of Christ, let us make time to reflect on our individual role in God's kingdom and to examine our hearts to discover who or what we serve, what we submit to, to discover how we can change that and personally submit to Christ. It does not have to be participation in these ministries, not all have that signature strength, time, or ability. But it can be something so simple that reflects your love and service to a fellow worker in the kingdom. A smile to a stranger, a change of heart through forgiveness of someone, a small gesture of kindness 
that lifts up the lowly. This is what it means to come and worship the newborn king. Let us sing it. to serve others with an invitation for them to do the same. Amen. Amen. And now we continue with our hymn of the day. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And on the third day, he rose again, he is ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm amid the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. God, you sent your son Jesus to, step, to testify to the truth. We pray for preachers, missionaries, evangelists, and teachers who carry your forgiveness and love to the world. Fill their words and actions with compassion and kindness so that your truth will shine. God, in your mercy, God, you sent your son, Jesus, to liberate all creation. We pray for all living things longing for the freedom to flourish, 
from ancient trees and wild grasses to endangered animals and rare insects. Give human beings compassionate hearts to care for them. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to lead us into the way of peace. Direct the members of international alliances in choosing a nonviolent path toward the future. Give them the humility and wisdom to make ju just decisions to benefit all. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to make us into your own people, set free to serve you. We pray for people who serve the well-being of others, especially ministries in our community. Renew them in their work. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to rule in all times and places. We pray for the friends of our congregation who are unable to join our worship in person, and for all who are sick. This morning, we especially pray for Alina, Jenna, Margaret, Anna Mae, Julie, Alan, Ken, Carol, Anne, Alan, Joanne, Sue, Megan, Betty, Dion, Nancy, Dottie, Teresa, Bobby, Dottie, Tim, Ruth, Henry, Mary, Greg, Ann Joyce, Barbara, Shelby, Sharon, and Naomi Rose. Join their prayers with ours and unite them with us in the body of Christ. God, in your mercy. God, you sent your son Jesus to be our beginning and our ending. We give thanks to those whose lives have given us a glimpse of Jesus' reign of justice and peace. Empower us to join their witness. God, in your mercy. God, our hope and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Our offering prayer, God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offerings of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast 
through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Distanced by location, but united in spirit, let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now, may God, who gathers us in love, lead us in pathways of righteousness and justice. May God, who knows us more deeply than we know ourselves, lead you and I in pathways of forgiveness and freedom. May God, who fills us with good things, lead us in pathways of equity and abundance for all. And may the blessing of the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Lord. <laughs> 